Welcome to Information Service Engineering Lecture Number 11 Basic Machine Learning Part 2. As usual, and you know this already, before we go into the content of this lecture, we have to do a brief recap of the last lecture. There we started our new part, our new topic, Basic Machine Learning, with the brief history of artificial intelligence. And you learned a lot about, you know, biological neural networks, artificial neural networks, and how machine learning developed over the time and what its relation to symbolic uh, knowledge representation is what we did in the last part of the lecture. Of course, we were looking on how humans learn and what then is really machine learning and what are machine learning applications. We distinguish two different kinds of machine learning problems, classification problem and regression problems. For classification problems, the important thing was you wanted to find out whether your data belongs to a specific predefined class or not. So this was a yes, no decision. Of course, there are multi-class classification problems where you then have to decide you have a multitude of classes to which of them belongs your data. And there is a regression problem, which means there you want to predict a real number or a vector of real numbers in the end. Furthermore, we distinguish supervised from unsupervised learning. The difference here is also quite easy. Supervised means you have labeled data, you know already the outcome and you can really learn from an example. In unsupervised learning methods, you don't have the labels for the labeled data. This can be due to numerous reasons. Usually it's rather cost expensive. So it's, it's, um, it's really costly to label data. So therefore, in many cases, we have insufficient number of labels or no labels at all. And then these kind of unsupervised learning methods, clustering methods are really useful because they are searching for patterns in your data and grouping together what is most similar, what belongs together. Then again, in general, we looked at machine learning challenges. So, and we learned that of course, if you have, let's say, bad data quality from which you learn, you can't expect your data or your, your, your learning results, your predictions to be first class. So this is never the case. So feature engineering, cleaning up your data, preparing your data is really essential and choosing the right features you make a decision on. However, also if you have chosen your features well, you might run into overfitting, which means you train simply your model too much and then it over adapts to your training data set and loses its capability for generalization. And this, of course, we also want to avoid. So overfitting is another of these problems. Then, of course, all kind of preparation tasks we were looking on. And this, of course, is data cleaning. We already named that. Then, of course, it's important um, to split your data, to sample your data, because you have to distinguish in training data and test data. And then to optimize your machine learning model, you need a third set of data, which is the validation data set with which you check already the quality. How well does your model in the training process still generalize? Is it capable of generalizing or is it already overfitting? I have to check this. And then in the end, you make uh, again um, on, on this model a test on um, previously unknown data. And this is then the test set in cases when not so many data is available. What you do there is the so-called cross-fold validation. And this is something we have talked about, uh, a special way, of course, simply to take out one specific part of the data and use this then for validation. And then um, do several rounds, always take out another part of the data and in the end compute the average. And this then is a result achieved by cross-fold validation, which of course is not as good. So usually, um, or Let's say the quality of the model will probably not be as good as if you have more data available and you can do a real split between um, training data, validation data and test data. Okay, but this was what we were doing last time. What are we going to do in this lecture? In this lecture, we are really talking about three different and important algorithms. So first of all, we will start with an unsupervised machine learning method. We will talk about clustering, especially about the k-means clustering um, method. How does clustering work? Usually in these clusters, or you can also call them classes, um, things belong together where you know the distance between these data you have there within a cluster should be rather small. However, the distance to things in another cluster should be large. So these are, let's say, 
the conditions which we want to use for optimize then again these cluster separation in the cluster separation process or cluster creation process and this is something what also k-means does and you will learn here how the k-means algorithm works and we have also prepared a collaborative notebook for you where you can see really k-means algorithm at work this was the unsupervised learning part we will continue then with regression and there we do of course the most simplest regression you will get a brief introduction into the linear regression which means then we have let's say uh, an, uh, a cloud of sample data and in this cloud of sample data we want to approximate the data with the help of a linear function or if it's multi-dimensional data with a hyperplane and uh, we learn how to do that how to estimate then the error and how to make predictions with, with that and you will see this also on the example of a collaborative notebook when we do also some kind of weather predictions um, based on sample data with the help of linear regression and then we are going for heavier arms um, we then will be looking for another classification algorithm which is decision trees this is another model Decision trees, like you see here in the upper left corner, are decision procedures where you test one variable at a time and then the next variable. And therefore, of course, it's really important considering the sequence in which you test these variables, because by, you know, you, you test a variable and then according to the outcome, you follow the paths downward. And if there can be, you know, a, a split into many different outcomes, according to the number of variables you're going to test, this, of course, can become rather huge. Therefore, it's dependent on the size or, or let's say on the sequence of the variable, how you test them. Because um, in the worst case, there can be really an exponential growth of this uh, tree and then it's much too large. We will see that these trees are rather powerful. They are easy, let's say, to, uh, to, to, to understand because if you follow a path there you can also see the line of thought or kind of an explanation for why this result has been achieved so they are close to human thinking however they are rather prone to uh, overfitting and we will see then in the collaborative notebook that we have prepared for you how you can at least let's say not completely avoid but make the situation better with this overfitting by for example pruning and then optimizing this decision tree with the help of uh, pruning algorithms. So this is also done uh, based on statistics or then with random forests, which is an assemble method by which you then create many decision trees for a specific problem. And in the end for the decision or the classification, you do then a majority vote. Okay, these are our topics. So we have k-means for unsupervised learning. We have linear regression for regression and we have decision trees for a classification algorithm. Okay, these are the topics for the upcoming lecture and of course we hope that you will have fun.